Next on the list, we need to talk about Drake's album, Scary Hours Free. Scary Hours Free. Now, on the surface, the one thing that I was disappointed about was the fact that he did that thing that everyone does now. When you put out an EP or you put out a deluxe or whatever, you drop the entire album again on the DSPs. And I don't know about you guys, maybe it's different on Spotify, but I use mostly Apple Music. When you add a song from Apple Music, no, when they do that on Apple Music, for instance, like the regular album, it kind of fucking disappears from the listings. You don't see it anymore. All you see is a, all you see is a, is a is a deluxe, unless you've got the regular on your on your phone saved. When you search for all the dogs, all you will get is a deluxe now. You won't get the regular version without the deluxe on it. So you basically have to download or add both albums. You know, you basically have to have two albums on there, and then maybe individually delete the tracks like I did. So I had to add for the dog scary hours edition, and then remove all the tracks from one to I think to twenty six or something, right? I think it's 1 to 26. No, it's 1 to 23. I deleted 1 to 23 tracks and then kept the six that he that he put out new. And that's the only thing that was kind of annoying. I hate that kind of fobbing of the game. You know, that, that kind of fiddling of the stats and the streams thing that everyone does is fucking annoying. If you're going to put out an EP, just put it out by itself without regurgitating the same tunes again to run up the streams. It's just fucking annoying. But I get it. It works. So it is what it is. That aside, that aside, that six track EP scary hours free right that addition that he added might be some of the best drake work i've heard in a long time it might be his best stuff he's put out in a very 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 long time it was so refreshing so amazing to just hear him just rap to just rap really well for six tracks straight right M minimal harmonizing and singing just him going bar for bar for bar for bar verse for verse for verse on every single track and i don't necessarily think i ever have, have a favorite i'm gonna be honest maybe i would say if you had to put gun to my head maybe wick man and evil ways might be two of my favorites but i think they all go super 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 hard um, obviously in terms of an interesting story arc i think the stories about my brother is an incredible 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 track it's such a great way to like diss someone like a joe budden but then not actually diss him because i guess the premise of this track is him going through this entire story arc of you know some of these guys that he's known who have kind of been done dirty by guys and that's what turned him into i guess a dog but then in a roundabout way, he kind of insinuates that this is a Joe Budden story. Because if you know anything about Joe Budden, you'd know that he used to date with that girl called Tahiri. And I think that was, you know, he always kind of mentions and says that she was like one of his real true loves. He proposed to her, all this sort of shit. So they had a very complicated up and down sort of like, you know, history and past, whatever. And if I'm not mistaken, um, when he, when they broke up, whenever, you know, they broke up a number of times, but one of the hardest ones to take was when they broke up and she ended up um, hooking up with um, Kevin Durant. Is it Kevin Durant? Oh, no, James Harden. Sorry, that's it. James Harden, not Kevin. James Harden. She ended up hooking up with James Harden, the beard. And you can imagine what that would do to a male, you know, to a man's ego, especially in America, those type of dudes, right? When your ex-girlfriend ends up dating one of the hottest NBA stars out here who's known to be, you know, a, a literal stick man. So that probably didn't really resonate or kind of sit well with him at that time. And um, obviously Joe Budden got a hold of this information and wrapped it into, I think, kind of into the story about my brother, which was also really good. Um, Red Button was a stellar way to kind of introduce what he was going to say i think he went probably the hardest on red button maybe either ways probably was another one too but he went so 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 hard on red button legitimately one of my favorite i think drake verses of maybe all time i'm not gonna lie like this opening verse is so 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 good i swear to god um the most of the, i read here from genius the most decorated competition decimated my drive is dedicated your drive is designated niggas got you on the spot then you separated reasons for it speculated we know how it escalated rarely celebrated grade 11 educated radio is king again audio is king remember that guys billboard got me reg regulated want to make it fair for you numbers that i generated do right and kill everything people knew that death awaited taylor swift the only nigga that i ever rated <laughs> oh come on 
too good only one could make only one could make me drop an album just a little later rest of y'all i treat like you never made it leave your label devastated even when you pad the stats period i never hate it even when you stab me in the in the back um the vest is metal plated right the, the and i think when i when i hear that stab you in the back thing the thing that I, on that honestly comes to mind is mostly the julius caesar story right the julius caesar uh, assassination how he was lured into um that situation and essentially stabbed in the back by some of his closest and dearest i fucking love that i, I flipping love it um trying to see a b inside my circle like i'm getting graded man all this luggage in the lobby like i'm getting traded every time you need me for a boost i've never hesitated every time that yeezy called a truce he had my head inflated thinking we're gonna finally piece it up and get to levitating realize that everything is premeditated that's quite a fucking tragic bar especially being a fan of both Ye and drake because essentially he seems like what drake's insinuating here is that he doesn't actually mind piecing it up with Ye with kanye he actually wants doesn't would like them to be cordial or be friends at least so they can actually get back to working and creating men memorable musical moments because their ongoing beef or yet you know Kanye's inability to let go of whatever drama they had and move on has really robbed us of some really great collabs between the both of them whether it's him you know whether it's Drake writing for Ye whether it's Ye producing a track for them or him or them two going back to back or making a tape together it's really and you know it's really sad that we don't get much from them because of the current static going on but it seems that Drake is basically saying hey I would actually like to be friends but every time I try and do it you know it's another scheme from Kanye to to do something so it's never real so I'm just going to stay away from him and you know we can probably understand especially the you know the state that Kanye is in at the moment he's probably not the best frame of mind to actually piece it up properly because he's got so many things going on it continues everyone was good with me then everyone expressed and faded taking time bomb they begging me to detonate it if i press this red button dog everybody heaven gated oh you know about heaven's gate cult press this red button dog every everything forever changes word to m dollar she the only one that could have saved it should have hit you first but sis you know that shit i've taken um niggas think i'm sweet but i'm not a diabetic patient did you hear that niggas think i'm sweet but i'm not a diabetic patient no i'll start blacking out like it's a segregation i'll fucking double crush you niggas like it's meditation like oh <laughs> this is the best version of drake honestly when he gets into he probably doesn't like it there's probably a part of him i think similar to like that weekend interview that i always speak about when the weekend put out kiss land um he was talking about how his fans hated it right kissland i think that was one of the most um you know i think you know i think that divided opinion kissland amongst the weekend fan base and the reason why was because a lot of us kind of were in love with the weekend because of his house of balloons era music so kissland was his sort of first foray into trying to be a pop star I remember he had mentioned in the interview when he was trying to do Kissland, because I think that's when he first started working quite heavily with Max Martin and stuff, right? That legendary um, pop star writer guy who writes a lot of the big hits out there. And he basically was saying that, hey, actually writing, you know, making music, making pop music that, gen that the general public would like, like normally people would like, is actually harder than doing the, you know, the House of Balloons type music for him. He says he could basically, you know, make six different house of balloons with his eyes closed but actually trying to write a banger pop record that regular mums and whatever will like across the world is actually much harder of a creative challenge of an artistic challenge and maybe that's the same thing with drake maybe drake actually feels like he can do you know this scary hours free with his eyes closed because if you if you believe him from what he said in the little trailer that he put out um prior to the release of this tape he said that he only wrote these lyrics in the last week none of this has been pre-recorded he actually made this entire thing in a week or something like that like this wasn't stuff that was left behind that was on the cutting room floor that he forgot to add to the album allegedly all this stuff was made within the last seven days of the of the release of the fucking album which is scary right to think that he just put this out on a whim like fuck it let's go let's fucking go and he ugh, delivered you know to say the least he says yeah um i could tell you better than i show it it's a demonstration 
Um, I'll fucking leave you in the dirt like some vegetation. Chemicals is mixing in my brain and killing hesitation. I will fucking force a few shots like a vaccination. Niggas calling me up to cap. This is not a graduation. I will fucking put your ass on pause like I'm Pastor Mason. I will set alarm off because a whole evacuation. I'll fucking, I'll fucking, I'll get you 10 years from now like a procrastination. And I think that's most of a push a T this probably, right? Like he's never gonna forget that this, that that beef. He's gonna get him back eventually. I'll fucking find out wherever y'all celebrating, pull up, park my phantom on the curb like I'm Larry David, and then we'll see who's really crazy. I don't know what this park up my phantom on the curb is. Uh, this Larry what's this Larry David line? What are they saying yeah on genius about this? I don't really what's that? Did he do that in the episode of Larry David? I don't really know. Maybe it's something that we kind of find out. But yeah, um, like I said, whole absolute EP add-on full of absolute bangers. Um, I really did enjoy listening to this one. It kind of dropped eventually in the gym. I was absolutely going crazy. No, actually, I listened to this at home first. I didn't listen to the gym straight away. And obviously, I kind of carried this over into the gym. It was only like, if I'm not mistaken, once you take away all the other tracks, it's about it's about 35 minutes length if i'm not mistaken definitely one of my favorites and then the other one that i really liked on the album is wickman i think is this produced by conductor too let me just see the listing to on genius is this a conductor be or alchemist who did this oh alchemist so alchemist produced this one what's the other ones um produced by vinyls and boy wonder for evil ways you broke my heart was done by vinyls and then i'm guessing red button is that done by conductor no oh really red button was done by little yatty in a person called overcast that's pretty fucking cool um conductor did um stories by my brother and then the shoes fit was done by over so little yatty produced two again this is why people need to put some respect on little yatty's name people was uh, acting as if like the little yatty's inclusion in drake's creative process was the reason why they didn't like the previous album for the dogs but clearly it's showing that maybe he just didn't like the album it was just an excuse to hate on the yatty because he came through and produced two of the six or co-produced two of the six records on here and two of them are two of the strongest records on there also so you can definitely can't say that he is you know um that he is a negative influence on him but clearly one of the best ones for sure was evil ways with j cole I think the reason why this was really impressive was because having listened to J. Cole's interview with Lil Yachty on his show, um, I think it's called Safe Space. It's on YouTube. It's a podcast that he does with his friend Mitch. It was a really good interview. One of maybe the better J. Cole interviews that I've seen. Um, it always makes a big difference when an when a, a, a an artist of J. Cole's caliber is interviewing with another artist. You just get a far better interview, especially because J. Cole is far older than... Um, then yeah so he obviously uh, you know approaches it in a more of a mentor big brother type of role thing so it ends up being a really awesome conversation because it turns into basically a mentorship thing and we're just flies on the wall listening in so it's a really cool interview but one of the things that came out from that interview was ken you know was um j cole mentioning the kendrick um relationship and the collaboration and the rumored tape that they were going to put out and never came out and j cole basically saying hey we don't really have any music um out there that hasn't been put out there that's worth people listening to we're both really busy but if we do lock in it'll be really good but we have to make it real for real for us we probably you know a lot of work has to go into make it work and it reminded me how good they sound together but hearing drake and j cole go back to back you know near kendrick you know doing his own thing at the moment i'm starting to feel like i i, I might want to see a drake and j cole um, collaboration mixtape before I see a Kendrick and J. Cole one to be honest because they sound really good together when they're going back to back like this Evil Ways song is just so good seeing them trading bars one for the other is just fucking amazing um, it starts off with yeah I got some Evil Ways even through the glasses you could see the gaze to find your way up to the top this shit's gonna be a maze Volkswagen shit the way I'm running Beatles plays <laughs> come on bro Drake just spaz down another bar. Another one. Jayco comes in. Volkswagen shit the way I'm running these Beatle plays. Um, no, yeah. Jayco comes in here. Yeah, and we link it like we free the slaves. I conquered hell, walked the veil, and set my feet ablaze. My heart hardens every year like sneakers that Adidas made. I never did the VMAs. I'm not in need of praise. Like, come on, bro. 
two bars already and you're like okay cool all praise to the born sinner jesus slaves um born sinner like the little you know j cole kind of entendre there my brother's running through the six like the green berets beefing with the block that's 500 feet away wheel of fortune shit the way they say they need a k <laughs> come on no oh i need a raise and a safe to stash these free lays times were hard i watched my mama rubbing pool just to get peter paid and now my paper folded like when teachers don't want the classmates to see your grade time is spending now i see the grays poking out of this beard but it's weird because i feel like i ain't even age y'all see the rage feet firmly planted on these precious flowers i've been handed match me match me be the vase <laughs> anyway i'm not gonna go too much into it um the bars are crazy probably some of drake's best work um people are suggesting that this is the consequence of joe Biden going after him and saying what he said about scary hours free possibly i think so um but i don't think it's more so him trying to prove i think it's more so him maybe feeling a little bit disrespected he probably thinks hey i'm taking chances i'm out here I'm one of the top artists out here. I, I still release basically every other year. I'm doing collaborations. I'm doing singles. I'm, so I'm doing features. I haven't disappeared because you, you mentioned it again in that skit about people like, I think Drake's got a really a big bone to pick about people who are, you know, at the top of their game, but decide to kind of purposely do the whole disappearing thing. It kind of really does rub him up the wrong way because I guess he kind of credits, he kind of, puts a lot of credence and still being quote unquote active so he probably thought of it as quite disrespectful that he's the one artist that is really active especially in that level and he's the one that's being scrutinized the most and his intentions are being questioned or whatever it may be and he's probably just having fun of it at this time because he just knows that on top of his game it's you know he's probably not going to fail anytime soon so this addition that he added was probably just a reminder like you know, like I, like I think I mentioned on Twitter before, like it's like that meme or it's like that, you know, it, uh, legendary interview of Jose Mourinho where he was at Man United about respect. You know what I mean? Put some respect to my name. I know, I'm, I know you might think, you know, you have reason to see bias of what you know about me, but remember, I'm still that guy. I'm still him. And I think this is Drake's reminder more so as a, less so as a proof to like a button person, like a Joe Budden. Hey, I still hear, blah, blah, blah. I think it felt more like a, Hey, let me just remind you guys that I'm still that guy. And I think he did it. I think he did it. That's six out of six. That's a banger. Um, there is maybe a counter argument to that. Some fans could probably sit there and say, um, is he being lazy with the previous ones? Because this obviously sounded like he was hungry. It sounded like he had the point to prove, a reminder to put out there. So maybe there is a, you know, uh, there is a point to be had if you say, oh, was the previous projects just a cash grab? Were they just him going through the motions? Does he not care about his fans? Is he not giving us his best work? Maybe that is part of it, but I don't think that's fair. I just think, you know, after a certain level, once you, you know, Drake's basically won it all, achieved it all, it's probably hard to find the motivation to kind of keep you going anyway. So maybe it's not even like a conscious thing of like not being motivated to the top of your game. Maybe it's just something that you just do because, you know, you find it easy, you put it out, people lap it up, it is what it is. But then when you do have a lot of people maybe criticizing you, maybe you want just to remind them that, hey, I'm only doing this for fun. If I get serious, this is what it's about. I don't want to do it serious because I, I don't I don't care. But this is what level I'm on if I do get serious. So that was a good reminder to put out there. And for me, um, you know, being the kind of person that always says, oh, he doesn't have a one classic album guy uh, because I still think Drake has a lot of really good projects that are good in patches, but they don't, they're not the most cohesive. I think this might be one of his most cohesive projects he's ever put out legitimately i know it's only six tracks i get it but you know add four more tracks onto this he legitimately this might be one of the most cohesive projects that he's fucking put out in a very 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 long time so big up drake for pointing out there appreciated none never ever ever ignored and i can't wait to hear what else he puts out for us especially going forward and maybe he takes a break from this as well this also might be a good point to actually go on a proper break and just relax and chill and then see how it goes from there so yeah loved it loved every bit about that project and of course most of you know where that is where you can find it for the dog scary hours edition it was actually called scary hours free but i guess now it's not it's been kind of changed to scary hours edition unfortunately you have to re-download or re-add all the other fucking tracks on there to listen to it again but i did the fucking you know the nerdy thing and individually delete all the other tracks i already got them on the other album and listened to the other six and i was really really happy so big up drake for that one big up drake for that one